understand like a lot of fans uh, especially like you know the, as as you said like fans who are not in uk who are supporting the club they get uh, restless uh, looking at you know when the results are not coming their way and the easiest thing to say at that moment of time is that you know oh, we have uh, an, a, a, a 90 million player we have a 50 million player and you know if something is wrong it's it's the manager at fault and that is not the case all the time so uh yeah. keeping keep, keeping that in mind it's it's really important to back your manager and we have seen now and again like you know if you give the manager a bit of time and you know back him up with good signings you know they actually work their magic yeah. like like you can you can have a look at with Mourinho, even with Klopp, or even with pochettino i mean there, there are numerous examples in the premiership only sure there are. I agree. I mean, I think that uh, Klopp's a great example, actually. Um, but I just think that the whole premise that there is an endless amount of money to spend is not true. It's certainly not true at United, and I don't think it was true at Liverpool for a long time. It's true at City, and it has <laughs> bought a couple of league championships. Yeah. They never sound happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's always yeah. there's always somebody saying, "Oh, the manager's going to leave. Oh, he's going to go here. He's going to go there." They've not got enough fans. They extended their stadium and they couldn't fill one stand. Yeah. And um, it's just a way of spending money to get around these financial obligations yeah. that are put on them by the league. The league are idiots. I mean, that's another group of old men that are led by idiots. Yeah. I mean, if these people had any idea, even the vaguest clue about how easy it is to get around their rulings yeah i mean really yeah you know you look at letting city off yeah letting them off you know they don't, don't they ever kind of actually implement their own rules no yeah. they don't everybody's let off i suspect that there's large amounts of money goes into brown paper envelopes and they're passed across of, of course, of course. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I mean. As, since you brought this topic of city up, like one thing which I observe, like year in and year out. I mean, you just have to look at uh, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup uh, fixtures which City get. It's always a League Two or a League One or some you know Northwest Regional team playing them. Well, what is that? How how do they get that? And I think. Oh, I, I mean, you. And, and 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 looking at like because I support Liverpool, so I mean I, I I I look at them like closely. Like look at us in Carabao Cup, we are going to face Arsenal in the fourth round. <laughs> so it's it's great it's it's crazy like you know how they are playing like you know such small teams and like you know so such inferior of opponents and everybody else has just been shoehorned into playing probably a Premier League team in third or fourth round. So I think in general the part of the problem is that. I don't believe that there's much in the way of, um, well, what's the word really? Envelopes, money in envelopes. I, I don't, I don't think there's much of that in the UK. We're not like into it. It doesn't really happen. You know, you can't bribe the police. You can't bribe anybody really. Yeah. But <clears throat> in Europe, it does. And you know, organisations that base themselves in Switzerland, where there is no mm. financial regulation. Yeah. Clearly, do that with a reason. They do it yeah. for a reason. Yeah. And they do it so that sheikhs can put a lot of money into brown paper envelopes and pass it over. Yeah. It sees them through every problem. Yeah. And again, you're back with this idea that if fans owned 51% of the club, it would control, it would add a level of control to that right. happening. Correct, correct, absolutely. I mean, I totally agree with uh, you know this this uh, structure because I think it it would could give so much power to the fans actually, who are the soul of any club. So uh, I think that that should be uh, the structure at uh, every club. I mean, especially talk about the pre the Premiership and the Championship. At least I think that is very very possible. Keeping you know the fan base of each and every club, which is there, like I think round about. Uh, what uh, I think there'll be 40, 44 clubs in the Premier League and the Championship. So I think there'll be like a good amount of fans at, at, at each club, and we can definitely uh, have that fifty-one percent uh, thing happening. I think I think it's time the British government did something about it. They have it. They have it within their power to sort out mm. these issues. 
yeah. part of the problem for the British government is they don't know very much of what happens north of Watford. Mostly they don't understand football. They're all rugby fans because they all yeah. went to public school. And I don't personally care which school they went to. But at the bottom line of this, leaving the government to sort it out does yeah. not work. Yeah. I think it's time we had a public, a public debate and um, more. I think something stronger should come out of it, which leaves us with a 51% fan base in every club. I don't think... In the, very, in the very lowest leagues, it's probably not possible because you're not going to find the number of fans involved right. who want yeah. to be involved. Yeah, that's why I, I suggested the Premier League and the Championship only to like begin yeah. with at least. I think so. Um, I, I think further down the leagues, it wouldn't be possible. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, some clubs strike lucky and some don't. But, yeah. you know, very often, the further down the league you get, the less fans they have. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, you could probably could do it with the top 44 clubs. Yeah. But I but, think beyond that, probably But but, 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 but just, just a feeling which I, I, I think is going to come uh, around, you know, if, if something like this is proposed and, you know, talked about, then I think, you know, that uh, it would be pushed away because of, uh, you know, all the businessmen who own the biggest clubs. Because they know that, you know, then, you know, that the amount of shares and amount, the amount of money which they're making. For, for example, the biggest example is Glazers. Like, I, I don't think they're going to allow this uh, ruling to pass in any way whatsoever. They don't have any power. Yeah, you know what the problem is for the Glazers? They, their company, Man U, is yeah. registered in America on the American stock market. Yeah. They don't pay tax here. They yeah. don't have any, yeah. any power in the UK. Yeah. Some clubs do because they're owned by somebody who owns another business, which, yeah. you know, is involved in employing people in the UK, but the Glazers don't. Yeah. They have no power here at all. I mean, these guys are complete non-entities. I mean, they were when they started. They certainly are now. They don't have the power. I mean, if you're looking at the shakes at Man City or... Um, Oh, bless. Some of them lower down. I mean, you know, Leicester when they won the league or, yeah. you know, they did something for one season and, and their fans would buy into it because yeah. they know it could happen. It's a possibility. Yeah. It's not like, you know, the yeah. most unlikely thing in the world. But I, I do think that it would take a lot of fighting for and I think the British government would have to be determined to do it. Um. We have no decent organisation fighting for this. I mean, at the bottom line of this, is we are a lot of disparate fans who believe in it. Yeah. But um, an organisation that was put together to kind of do that isn't doing it. You know, they're too busy raising money to pay their own salaries, basically. Yeah. Just worthless. Um, but at the bottom line, I think we probably need to form a different organization and it needs to be more organized but one of the problems with sourcing organizations or developing organizations like this is that you then get these kind of groups of lads you know who want to go to woodward's house and throw fireworks yeah and and you get the blame for it and it's nothing yeah. to do with you, you know? yeah I mean, you should you should have been there when i was i owned a group called love united hate glazers and these yeah. guys went and threw red fireworks at him you know I got all kinds of abuse. And it was nothing to do with me. But I, I don't think that it needs an organisation. I don't, but I don't think it needs. I think it needs a national organisation. I don't think it just needs an organisation for United. I think it needs a national organisation who are prepared to go out there week after week and fight for it. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I I totally agree with you. I think you know uh, we have seen so so many clubs you know going down after like you know you know after so many poor businessmen who have taken over like the recent example being Bury, we have seen how what what happened with Bury, and you know the owners had no idea how to what the, uh, what yeah. the reg regulations of the fa were what was F, you know they had, they had absolutely no idea so i mean keeping that in mind i think the 51 percent thing for that to actually happen in my opinion the most important thing is for all the fans to actually come together irrespective of you know their uh, uh, you know their allegiance to whichever club i think they have to come together and just fight for it together they, I, I don't think there is I any agree. other way 
There's I no, agree with you. There's I mean, no I other way to put it. It's very tribal in the UK. I mean, we are tribes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like being an African tribe. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. can't get yeah. them to shift. Yeah. But I do think that it, it's going to take an organised effort, fans from all clubs, support from clubs. And we're not going to get support from people like the Glazers, but we may get support from smaller clubs yeah. who can see it as a method of putting money into the game. Correct. And, and uh, you know, somebody needs to get out there and do it. I'm kind of hoping it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I've got a life, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I think that somewhere down the line in all of this, people who know football would want to get involved with it. Yeah. People who don't know football would stand against it because they, they, they can't see the advantage of a 51% ownership. Yeah. And, I mean, I've got people in my group who've for years supported the Glazers. We thought they were getting a bad press, you know. Hello. <laughs> I've been sat here for 12 years telling you like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not a bad press. They're crap. Yeah. Um, but I just think that somewhere down the line, um, actually communicating with all fans is difficult. You know, there's 3 million fans around the world. They're all welcome to come and join my group and express their opinions <laughs> um, about how they think we could perhaps find a way of talking to our MPs and find yeah. a way of getting them to agree that we need a rule, we need a law. Well, the FA have laws, but actually they're just rules. Yeah. Um, but we really need a law change that says that 51% of all clubs should be fan-owned. And they can apply it across as many clubs as they like. I mean, it doesn't just yeah. have to be football. It yeah. could be cricket. Yeah, um, of course. Rugby, cricket, yeah. which, whichever sport is, is is there to be played in, like, in a club format. I think once it's got a club format and a registered club, that, that, that it should be 51% owned by the fans. And there may be situations where that's difficult to implement because there just aren't enough fans. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wouldn't like to have to implement it in handball, for example. Yeah. But I, I, do think that, I do think that it's possible. I mean, there's so much money in football. Yeah. It's just become a money spinner. We're just a cash cow for Americans. Yeah. We're nothing else. And the fans will not learn not to buy the shirt every year. Have you seen United's latest shirt? We're all going to look like <laughs> zebras, right? Don't <laughs> anybody buy that. I mean, God, <laughs> we look like a field full of zebras. I've never seen anything more ridiculous in all my life. There's some idiot <laughs> put it out that it was all to do with the stripes on collars and the history yeah. of the club let me tell them it's not <laughs> it is not I've never heard such a load of rubbish in all my life. but there we are again with the let's make money let's sell this ridiculous yeah. let's make them all wear it and yeah. let's advertise it on social yeah. media yeah. just 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 another PR spin for them oh tell you all it is is another way for the glazers to line their pockets yeah. and you're fools if you think it's anything else absolutely i i totally agree with you over there so now oh, i've been bitten <laughs> <laughs> all pro pro probably probably glazers have sent something <laughs> they sent mosquitoes to get me i think they're probably <laughs> quite mosquitoes um yeah, so I, I think I, I think that's that would be the only solution that, that would bring a satisfactory ending to the Glazers. Yeah. And yeah. I think if they thought that was coming, they would try to sell out. Yeah. I think they are the kind of people who thought if the cash cow was going to dry up, they would try to get out before get it out dried before. up. Correct, correct. And I, then you'd have to hope that they'd just get two pound fifty. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And, and there's no value to it, and they can't have any money. <laughs> yeah. So, so prob yeah, I'm, pro I'm probably when you know, probably you know, if if there's they 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 want to be out, and you know, that that is probably the best time for for the, for the fans to actually take over and you know, push the movement of fifty one percent ownership more and more because I think that is the best time to actually push. I mean, I don't want that to come to any club that you know the the, the whole structure is. Uh, crumbling under a very bad circumstance but then still like you know if that happens i mean i think that is the best time because financially speaking that's the most vulnerable a club can get 
and I think that's the best time to push on for you know a group of fans you know who can you know actually uh, vote for it and you know get this whole thing going. I think I think it's the only solution, and I don't yeah. see any other way of getting rid of the Glazers. I really don't. I mean, I you know we can talk about Jim Radcliffe and we can talk about. Um, the obscure Indian businessman, I can't remember his name. <laughs> Mukesh um, Ambani. And we've had a, what? Uh, his, his name is Mukesh Ambani. What does he do? Oh, he, he does everything. Like he, ha- he has uh, like a telecom company, he has shares in petroleum, everything. You name it, he, he, he has his shares Ooh. in there. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay, well, there was him and then there was some obscure Russian. Okay, another uh, oligarch. <laughs> so who was supposed to be you know and you're thinking to yourself do we want to wake up one day with an obscure russian and the answer is no we're no better off than now because yeah. really all the glazers are doing is asset stripping yeah they are businessmen who are asset stripping yeah we are being slowly asset stripped we will have nothing left the ground isn't for shit the toilets are frankly medieval there's holes in the roof of the ground. Um, <laughs> bizarrely, the kitchens for Old Trafford are under the pitch. But, you know, the whole situation with United, it's just like we're being asset stripped. They sell off anybody that comes through the, the academy who looks as though he might be okay but might not make the first team. Um, sold. You know, so, our, so then our under... 21s or under 18s or wherever the hell we are because they keep bringing out a new team um they don't have those people coming through so they fail yeah they don't have a consistent management so it fails anyway and i'm not sure that the junior teams are not subject to the same six-year cycle i've never checked that i will do yeah but i think Basically, we're just being asset stripped. I keep expecting to go to Old Trafford one day and find the supermarket name over it, you know, and they've made it into, sold it off as a supermarket. Yeah. Because that's the only other way left to make money is to sell the ground. Um, yeah, they'll probably like, you know, give away like a, like a naming sponsor pretty soon in order to raise more that money. That was something that came up two years ago, you know. Yeah. Did we all want to be the Waitrose Academy or whatever? You know, <laughs> did we want it to be named after Tesco? Um, yeah. Nobody wants it, but you've got no vote against it. Yeah. If they say it and they do it, it's done. Yeah. So it's, it wouldn't it, be called it's, it, it's, it's like how, what happened with Borussia Dortmund, like uh, like a, a, a gigantic stadium. I think it's easily, I think, 80,000 plus seater stadium. Uh, and it's one of the most iconic stadiums in uh, Germany. And all of a sudden, with, from, you know, the name of, uh, best fallen stadion it's, it's become signal Iduna park so it, it just it just it just takes away the whole uh, feeling of the of, 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 of the of the of the ground well we have a, a big i'm going to call this a discussion going on in the uk at the moment about black lives matter okay okay i i, I don't think black lives matter more than white lives i think it's absolute nonsense but you know okay let them talk but I think that chain, the problem with the BLM organization is they want to take away our history. If they don't like our history, they want to erase it. And that's what the Glazers are doing. If they, they don't care about our history, they just want to erase it and replace it with somebody else's name so they can get money for it. And that's yeah. all it's about. It's just about the cash cow. Yeah. Take the money and run. Yeah. I'd like to say, if the Glazers are watching this, please take the money and run. We don't want you. <laughs> I, I just, I, just I, I find myself so frustrated about the Glazers, really. Yeah. Really frustrated. Yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can totally relate with your frustration. I mean, I've, I've been there as, as a Liverpool fan under Chiller and Higgs. It's, it's, it's the worst feeling you can ever get, like, because, you know, you you and, and and the thing is like you can't even blame the players for it because you know it, it it's not their doing they've just been bought yeah. and you know just thrown into a, an ecosystem which is meant to fail and you just have to sit back and you know hope that this just becomes better somehow or the other so i yeah i don't i mean as i say the six-year system that they've implemented which 
they see as the most profitable system because they're not uh, out several years out of six they're not really going to spend any money on on uh, transfers yeah and they're keeping all the costs of the club down 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 by not repairing the stadium and da 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 um so this six year cycle they've got it only really relies on them signing players for two seasons um basically in between that time United could go to the hell and back on a handcart and they don't care. There is no passion, no interest, nothing. I mean, these are people who have no passion and they have no interest. And the fans keep lining their pockets. God alone knows why, but they do. So don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do not support the Glazers by lining their pockets. You can't. I tell you what, I could say that on a daily basis in the group, and I'd still get somebody saying, You've never said that before. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I am definitely anti Glazers. So it can come as no surprise that I own a group called Love United Hate Glazers. Hate Glazers yeah. Absolutely. At least 160,000 people agree with agree you. Agree with you, yes. <laughs> I think I think that's a, that's a great start actually. Like I I mean I I, I follow a, a fair bit of uh, uh, United supporters on Twitter and you know it's 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 the common theme everywhere. Like you know like most of them have like the the initials of L U H G which stand for Love United Hate Glazers in their uh, username. Yeah, <laughs> that's where it came from. That's where yeah. L U H G is is the is what we use as our yeah. hashtag. Yeah. Um, but I and I, you know, we made all this up twelve years ago. This is before yeah. people started to kind of latch onto it. Um, and another thing that we made up as a group was "enough is enough," which was another hashtag yeah. that got used a lot against yeah. the glaze. And and we made that up too. But I think um, doing it, but actually getting a result would be. I mean, people say to me, "When the glazers leave, are you going to rename the the group?" Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 what are you going to call it? How the hell should I know? They yeah. might never go. Yeah. <laughs> I could be dead. Yeah. I could be buried in the Glazers might still be there, stripping yeah. every asset and selling everything in sight, you know. Yeah. No, it's not a happy situation. Not at yeah. all. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. Do we, do, we, do we want to talk about anything else in there? Uh, uh, no, I think, I think we have had like a good amount of uh, points in there and, you know, we can make like a good video out of it. Okay, and then can I have a copy of the video that I can put in my group? For, so people for know sure, for it? sure. So what, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll upload it on YouTube. I'll probably, since it's, it's like, I think it, it came out to be like more than one and a half hours. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> one, one and a half hours right now. Bang goes the 40 minutes then, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one and a half hours. So I, I'll probably break it into uh, two uh, videos. Or probably even three, if you know, if uh, it become it feels like a bit uh, longish, and I'll just keep on releasing it within two, two, two to three days, and then what's you know, I'll just upload it on YouTube and I, I'll share the link with you. Thank you, thank you. But, I mean, I will just put them in the group. Let one hundred and sixty thousand yeah. people see it. You know, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. sure your name up there. You know, we want them to come to your. <laughs> see, you know maybe to see the other girls yeah, um, yeah I, did, I didn't feel the other girls are quite so opinionated as me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so so so, so, so if, if you talk about like uh, football in India especially like in India it's it's, it's it's a growing sport right now and because India is more of like a cricket dominant sport yeah so uh, football is slowly and slowly growing and it's it's become becoming very popular uh, so so the guy uh, who was uh, you know there were rumors of buying manchester united mukesh ambani he owns the uh, he like he has the majority share in the indian league setup so it's it's, it's like yeah the indian super league so it's like a half private half uh, you know uh, the fa the indian fa owned thing so right. the private money is mukesh ambani's and and, right. and 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 another thing due to which like I don't think that Ambani is gonna uh, anyway buy United is purely because that uh, his his local team which is uh, Bombay the, the 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 city of Bombay so he has uh, you know shares in that as well and that was recently bought by the City Group 
All right. Yeah. So I highly doubt now that he's going to buy United. I mean, that 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 won't add up in my opinion. I don't think. I don't think. I mean, a lot of these people that get associated with football clubs, like Jim Ratcliffe, for example. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's a businessman. He's a chemical engineer, but he's a businessman. Yeah. Um, he owns highly successful businesses. He owns highly successful football clubs, some of them down here in the south of France. Um, yeah. He lives in Switzerland. You know, he's got more sense than to pay tax in the UK. Um, he's a Manc. He's a Man United fan. And he always has been all his life. And I speak with a certain degree of certainty. But <clears throat> his attitude is that United has gone too far, that the Glazers have gone too far. And that the cost of getting, not just the cost of the three billion or whatever it is, the ridiculous amount of money that the Glazers want. Yeah. It's not just the cost of that. It's the cost of getting United back on track. You could have yeah. to spend another two billion pounds doing that. Correct. Upgrading the stadium. Da, da, da. So I, d I don't think anybody in the world is going to do it. I don't think so. I think the only way out is through the 51%. Yeah. I don't think any businessman really has enough money to do it. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. And I, I, I know what you were trying to say. Like it, 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 It's an uphill task. So I'm just hoping for the best because I think, uh, to be really honest, I, I feel like, you know, the, 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 the big four, which was there, like the old big four, of, uh, Liverpool, United, uh, Chelsea, sorry, and Arsenal, uh, all, 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 all these four clubs are like one of the biggest traditional uh, clubs in England. Of course, along with like, you can say Nottingham and uh, probably even Aston Villa and Leeds, like five, six of these clubs. But then, you know, if you talk about consistency, like these four are like at the top in the past, you know, probably 40, 50 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, not having that old rivalry kind of, I mean, for me, like, you know, who's, who's been watching football since such a long time, I mean, it just takes the edge off. Like, you know, you just see, like, you know, City with all the money they have and it, it, it just doesn't have doesn't that. Have yeah, it's, it, it, even if the rivalry is there, like, you know, there, there's this, you know, so-called rivalry between Cardiola and Klopp and City and Liverpool. But it does not have that edge, which I feel like, you know, back in the day, even like, you know, when probably Benitez and Ferguson were there, like, you know, that edge, that hotness, which was there in, 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 in the games. Like, I mean, that, that should come back. I, I mean, for me, like, I'm, I'm, I, you can call me like, an, uh, like, a, like probably a nostalgia guy, but then, I mean, that's, that's what I feel makes the game all the more interesting. I think the problem is that people like the Glazers are not interested in making it interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's just interesting is stripping the money out. Yeah. And, and you're quite right, it's not so interesting. I have to say that despite everything, our biggest rivals are Liverpool. It's never Man City. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't matter what City do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, it's just not important. The rivalry is between United and Liverpool. Yeah. And as you say, it's a push, Chelsea and Arsenal. Yeah. But nobody, I mean, I don't think about Leicester City being. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know they won it once. Yeah. They joined that famous club, you know, yeah. the ones the lifetime winners, Blackburn. Blackburn, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. You know, but, but you don't look at them and think, wow, big competition. Yeah. You know, no, no, it's not the same. The rivalry isn't really there. The press would like to make it there, but it's not. Yeah. It's not. So you can't invent it, you've got to feel it. Absolutely, 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 and 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 you know I think the, the 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 feeling of that rivalry comes right down from the fans, and since City don't have any fans, so <laughs> just saying, just saying, you know there is no rivalry. <laughs> no rivalry. Because nobody. Knows. I've got a friend. Who's, I swear to God, this is true. I've got a friend who has a season ticket at Man City, oh. so she can watch. The, the United City game that's held that shoots the only time she uses it. She uses it for one game every year. <laughs> it's not that she's rich, she's just yeah. like determined to go to that game. Yeah, 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 she's got a season ticket for that one game. Yeah, that's the way it goes, isn't it? I keep telling her, don't don't go don't renew your season ticket. You're lining the glazers' pockets that she yeah. doesn't take it. 
<laughs> Girls on tour. <laughs> yeah. We like to go to all the games. Yeah. So thank you so much, Joan, for being here with us today. It was it was indeed a great pleasure to have you on the show with us, and I'm I am hoping here that you know you also enjoyed being here with us today. Great pleasure. Enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. See you. Bye. Bye bye.